this was a pre-patch that did not go very well. In a huge bunch of ways. Well, the warband bank was broken for the first whole week, and everyone's like, oh, cool, the whole feature broke. Nice, nice one. Um, a lot of different small things cropped up with the with the pre-patch people didn't like, people didn't enjoy things like the talent trees for enhancement of ret not going live because they're not done. And everyone goes, Wait, what? <laughs> you shipped it? What do you mean it's not done? <laughs> that uh, was really weird. Yeah. That was odd. Yeah, and then a week later, and they're like, oh yeah, the, the event, the great big event, the Reading Echoes, not to mention the fact that the big quest was three seconds long, approximately. We're used to that um, at this stage. Yeah, it's like, oh, experience the new quest line. The new, Magni, talk to Magni, Magni goes, oh, I'm sad, and then, ah, oh, I'm exploding, and that's it. Are you ready to take mm. back Gilneas, champion? Of course, yeah. <laughs> of course. So, uh, then we had the event launch. And I'm sure you're all familiar enough, but that pre-patch launched in a horrible state that had everyone going, what happened to these developers? Did they not think ahead whatsoever? And then that was a, like a, a beginning of doom, right? Everyone was like, oh, the vibes are bad. The bit is broken. It's like, it's not, like the bit test is broken as hell. People are struggling there. Okay, then the quest isn't great. What was broken? Everything is broken. Everyone's like, Oh no, and then it was, because you covered this in the wrong news, it was Nerissa of Warhead was like, maybe this expansion needs a delay. And everyone's like, you know what? You seem, you're on to something this one. You're on to something this one. I mean, when the pre-patch launches with loads of the talent, well, with some talent trees missing, yeah. I mean, sh <laughs> that's, that's goofy. We're not used to that. But um, there is a, a little bit of a change with them. And uh, that is that they, they very much seem to spring into action within hours. I was almost aghast. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that it was... Because I thought it was weird that it was Zorbrix asked for feedback. And I was like, okay, well, they're clearly paying attention. Something's going on. And then Kyvax hits the post on thing going, hey, we're going to fix this now. And you're like... Sorry. Sorry. You're going you're to fix the game? After you launched it? What sort of forbidden sorcery is this? I didn't know AAA developers were allowed to do this. I thought you had to ship it, and once it was shipped, it was broken forever, and you went, thanks for the money, dickhead, and ran off into the yeah. fucking sunset. Apparently, no, they decided to fix things And instead. do you know what is a really great example of this? And look, I'm not going to belabor, you know, points about an entirely different video game, but uh, so for the longest time, right, Team Fortress 2 was hovering about 60k active players, and it had a massive botting problem to the point where it genuinely made TF2 a kind of unplayable experience a bunch of the time. So Valve did ban waves. TF2, I mean, normally people would think, oh, uh, artificially inflated via bots, nobody's really there. After Valve did the bot bans, you know, numbers went straight up, I think to just shy of 150k. TF2 is a good game. If, and I, if I didn't have other games to play, I would still be on 2Fort. I'm saying, yeah, I've spent dozens of hours, dozens and dozens, hundreds of hours on 2Fort a long time ago. But anyway, the point basically is those like immediate player facing issues in your game, be that this event being banjaxed, be that uh, the TF2 thing, like, yeah, it fucking matters to the numbers. So I, I guess whenever people say, oh, Blizzard don't deal with botters because they want the subscription money, um, I mean, I totally get the logic there, but you just take a look at, say, the Team Fortress 2 example, and yeah, that's different. That's you know, free-to-play. Um, but you look at that, and you look at how they got so heavily punished um, by their players for a long time for not fixing the bot problem, and then when the bots go away, the players come back, because guess what? It's a good playable experience. And I guess that's the real thing that I've noticed with this. So the way it used to work is you would, uh, you know, you would do the memories, and then the boss would spawn, and then the boss would be just knocked over in like two minutes, and then that'll be it for 90 minutes. Cool event. Come back next time. <laughs> yeah, and that's why a lot of people were like, w were they even thinking about this whatsoever? Weird, Did they have yeah. any idea? And um, you kind of can get that, but I think it comes down to... Uh, probably just it felt way better on testing because there weren't as many people because it took a little while to sort the thing out and the event then would maybe take 20, 10, 20, 30 minutes. And they probably looked at, um, they probably looked at it like testing data. I went, oh, the event stays up for 30 minutes. Oh, the event stays up for 45 minutes sometimes. Mm. And then they went, oh, well, that looks fine then. But then they didn't realize, what do you call it? Oh, offer. <sighs> ho, ho, ho. That was almost like Kung Fu fighting. 
thing you did there. Oh my god, so I did. Nice. Um, um, that actually distracted me. Sorry, this is what we're looking at. That was only a few minutes. Uh, apologies, apologies. So thanks for letting us know. Uh, it's the problem with them. Um, with sometimes your uh, software doesn't actually work. Notion scene ain't working. Yes, that's exactly it. Because why would your scene work whatsoever? But anyway, as I was saying, I think they probably looked at the testing and went, yeah, it looks fine. Yeah. And then, like, oh, this is roughly our goals. Oh, like, players like, got a bunch of like rewards four, like 40 every 90 minutes. minutes. Like, yeah. Boom. Yeah, and then they uh, went live and they went, oh, shit. Oof. Yeah, I, like, they, we, we just didn't consider it. Shit. Do you wonder, like, is the sharding different? Like, does it just put players into these events to the point where the zone falls over in seconds, whereas maybe um, that doesn't line up with what their testing data was? Uh, I mean, look, possibly, I honestly do not know. Possibly. Um, what we do know, though, is how it's changed. So now the event just keeps on rolling. And there are some, uh, you know, first time of the day completion bonuses in the form of the dailies. Because, yes, instead of a weekly that you just do, like, on all of your alts and then funnel currency to the character you want to buy gear on um, using, of course, the lovely new currency transfer system. Now it is a daily. Uh, so they're dailies, and they are account-wide, which, for the vast majority of people, will increase their access to rewards, and the rewards have also been buffed. And uh, I think it's, um, as long as they have the UI to show it's, like, weekly per account, I think that's just more clear and reasonable. It's not always ideal when, you know, you feel like to actually get the most out of an event, you have to have 50 dudes to yeah. rotate between. <laughs> yeah, I saw, um, I saw some concerns about that which was very early on, but based on the original design, they were saying, okay, well, you can't actually, uh, you can't expect this going forward. Is this like a new warband system where they're like, oh, the new warband system, we've got everyone expected alts, so we're going to design things. It. We're going to design things for people to do on alts, which means, you know, you're supposed to have a load of alts. And it seems like clearly they, like, they the immediate changes are them going, no, 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 you do not get a... Uh, you do not get a bonus if you have alts, realistically. You get more gameplay, but you don't get a bonus on progression or anything along those lines. Yeah. Which is very, very, very nice. <laughs> which is very, very nice. So, at the minute, we've got it here. It's like 1312 or 13200 res residual memories a day. It costs about 50k-ish or so to get a full set. I think it cost me 50k on the dot. And that was a prot warrior. So, I had a 100 and a shield to pick up. So, that seems about right. And if you're uh, very lazy... And have the ability to have the uh, game on the background with your sound while doing other things. You can just literally hang around the boss and tab back in whenever the boss spawns. And that'll do you a decent few thousand. Dearie me, Matt. Yeah, everywhere. Dearie me. What bad behavior. Terrible behavior. Against Terrible. the community spirit. It is. But um, I'm not the only one. So, so uh, I think we need to take Matt to the gulag. Oh, please. Um, that is, oh that God, is absolute God. gulag behavior. Tut tut. The spiritual gains I would get from being in the gulag. Unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, you just, you just, I'm just thinking about um, Uncle Iroh um, mm, in yep. the the final arc of uh, Avatar where he just pretends to be like all, you know, decrepit, but when he's in prison, he's just secretly doing push-ups every single day. It's so cool. That anyway. is basically me if you listen to me. Um, but yeah, so I see people talking in chat about the secret FOMO mog you can't buy. That's an interesting decision. Oh. That's uh oh I think we probably have it here somewhere because, yeah. Holly, so, um, what have you done? So look at these. <laughs> well, below level 70, you'll loot recruits gear, including armor and weapons, but it's a right, excess restart gear. But these things are only gettable through this. And there's a very, very low chance of getting them. You just have to farm the memories and hope to God it drops, which is an interesting bit of feedback. <sighs> I mean, I look, I, I, I look at that and mm. I don't think that that is incentivizing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's incentivizing a healthy gameplay pattern. I can mm. understand the idea of, hey, let's just go turbo grind some currency. Uh, you know, you, you almost experience it in the same way that people would just somehow go gulp frog farming and just be in the flow. I say somehow, to be clear, I, um, I have farmed many tens of thousands of timeless coins and back in the original gulp frog farm back in the day on the timeless isle. So that kind of like works. And that's basically what it seems they've transformed this event into. Um, something like that being purely random, I don't feel as great about. And uh, I mean, it doesn't really seem worth the squeeze either. I have to wonder if it's an oversight in how the loot tables have been constructed or something. I assume something like that. I assume it's, uh, let me know if I'm a little bit louder now. Thanks for the, for the shout outs. Apparently my mic is quieter than yours. 
all settings kind of go a bit weird with restarts, so we'll have a look at that. But yeah, I'm assuming that they just found these and didn't think about them being unobtainable. Whoever put them on the loot table was like, yeah, we'll recruit stuff, we'll throw it on. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, we've, uh, we've kind of scuppered it a little tiny bit on that front. Um, as to whether they'll fix this or not, I'm not actually sure, to be honest. I imagine they're just like, eh, fucking whatever. Just do whatever. Which, for hyper collectors, is like... Being careful of this, being wary of it, they probably should be, because this is going to be like... Um, I actually have a fun statistic I'll bring up a little bit later. Uh, about collectors and stuff. Just from a community poll we did. But I do think it is fascinating that... This will ruin the, the experience for people. People will be sat here trying... Uh-oh. trying don't do that. Yeah. It's going to ruin people's experience, <laughs> man. Yeah, some people will try very, very hard to get these, and they'll be like kind of stressed out about it until they do. Which is kind of fun. Which I... Like... Adding them for the vendor for who loves to buy. Yeah, realistically, like, just throwing it onto the vendor because his new appearance would make sense. It would be a good fix. Aye. Hopefully they see that and get that actually sorted because, you know, there's plenty of time, obviously. There's plenty of time for this left. But is there anything else particularly to talk about? I don't think there's anything super major with this outside of, I guess, talking about how incredible it is that this is, like, the quickest Blizzard have ever acted to, on feedback. Yeah, it's maybe the quickest they've responded to like a live game problem that wasn't game breaking. Because this is like this. Well, this this wasn't game breaking. It was just really, really bad. But very clearly, they're like, okay, well, this kind of sucks. So what if we make it good? Now, I will say there's a little bit of a a slightly cynical um, <gasps> element of this. A slightly cynical element to this is that they also had the welcome back weekend. They had the Welcome Back Weekend, and Welcome Back to a game that's completely broken, everyone's hitting on it. Really stupid. Mm. Instead, what if you do, what if you avert the disaster, and then the Welcome Back Weekend is people going, oh, people are not dooming about the whole state of this fucking game. Well, that, that is pragmatic and responsible. It is, yeah. Um, do they have an incentive to do that that involves them getting more money? Yes. But funnily enough, that's aligned with our incentives as paying players, because it makes the product better. Yeah, game good. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Open shop. I mean, the expansion launch is still probably be dog in a bunch of ways. Oh, it's going to be. Which we'll get into, but yes. It is going to be top pants. I uh, I cannot wait, even though, like, big picture, I'm feeling pretty good about things. It's funny, I, I just recorded last night the video that, uh, that you led on the best and worst healers, and it was amazing because there's no losers. Yeah, not really, anyway. Um, the only Healer losers are, like, people who are less good than others, um, yeah. but still great. So yeah, uh, the biggest losers are the ones who got a revamp in the last patch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I, man, is funny. I'm, I'm definitely like I'm leaning towards Paladin just because uh, Holy looks way better now. Holy looks way better. I already like Rat, and uh, Prot does the job, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's that.